Well, hi there, and welcome once again to In Search of Christianity, brought to you by Bible Talk. And once again, on behalf of Mark, Alice, and myself, we want to greet you in the wonderful, the precious mm-hmm. name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The only name above all names. It's the only name given by which men can be saved. That's right. That's right. Um, we're continuing on, on the study that we started last week about ministry in the church, the call to ministry. Mm-hmm. And I think this is truly a significant and important study um, because as we go through it, I think you'll see the effects of not understanding it. Okay, uh, so that's that's all I'm going to say. Okay. That's all I have to say about that. Until Brother Mark asks God's blessing on our time together during this study. Well, Lord, I ask you to bless this Bible, bless this Bible study, so we can get more out of your Word to spread your love to other people. Amen. 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 And I pray, Lord God, that nothing would come out of my mouth that you haven't put in my heart. Amen. All right, as I say, we started this study last week, so excuse me if I seem maybe a little redundant, okay? But like Paul said to the Philippians, you know, to write the same things, that's no trouble to me, and it's a safeguard to you. So for me to to repeat a couple of things. Reinforce it. Yeah, reinforce it. Uh, Because we need to hear it until we get it, right? So I said when we started the study last week, it's intended, this study is intended to bring believers into an understanding, mm-hmm. a deep understanding of certain number of facts about ministry. Yes. The first of which in this study is going to be ministry is not about exalting a person. Right. Okay. Now that sounds like a simple statement to say, well, well of course. That ministry is about exalting a person, if well, that person is Jesus Christ. If, if that person is Jesus Christ. <laughs> right. uh, not the person in ministry. Think about what Jesus said to his disciples in the Gospel of Mark. And I'm going to read Mark 10, starting at verse 42. I, yeah. Calling them to himself, Jesus said to them, You know that those who are recognized as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them. And their great men exercise authority over them. But it is not this way among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you shall be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you shall be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. Ministry is about serving, not about being served. Now, I have to tell you, you know, we've had an opportunity. I've, I've been teaching for over 40 years, and we have been blessed to have had opportunity to travel to five continents, and I think I've been in like 50 countries sharing the word. And it's been all too many times that I have seen the people in, in ministry, mm-hmm. people in, in ministry, uh, apostles, prophets, evangelists, who are living like the princes of a worldly kingdom Mm -hmm. and they're being exalted. Now that's kind of understandable when you, when you come to understand that in our culture, we are being trained to raise up and lift up and exalt what we see as superstars. Mm -hmm. We we live in a superstar culture. Yes. Yes. I'm talking about singers and movie stars and, and athletes and, I don't even, even businessmen. I had a question. In in the Old Testament, Moses was the same way. He was a superstar. The oh, oh, yeah. wait a minute. No, he didn't consider himself one, but the people didn't wanted him to go between them and God because they didn't want to do it. Well, that's that's not quite right. Okay, God called him to be. That intercessor that between them. Right. It says that Moses was the most humble of men, all right? Yes. So he never made any attempt to exalt himself mm-hmm. to be considered. And if you think that they treated him well, maybe, no, they did not. maybe you better go back and read uh, Exodus. No, they did Leviticus, not. Leviticus, Deuteronomy. But they were lazy. Numbers. They didn't oh, no, want no, to it's do just, it. It's, no, because Moses was bringing the word of God. He was bringing it in power, and he was serious about it. Right. And they didn't like. And they didn't like that. 
Okay? Jesus said, don't be surprised that the world hates you because it hated me first. Well, the, the problem is, if you're not, if, if people inside, and I'm putting quotes around this, inside the church, the people of God, the body of Christ, if they are not in that place where they want to be humble, mm -hmm. that Christ might be exalted, they're going to be troubled by people who are humble, mm -hmm. if you, who are humble. Yes. You'll remember I said, I think I said it last week, if I did not, I've said it in, a, in a, quite a number of studies. When you walk in faith, as we are supposed to do, mm -hmm. your faith will challenge other believers, and they will either be encouraged by it, or they will hate you for it, right. because it stands in contrast to their lack of faith. Okay? I mean, that shouldn't be that way, but the simple fact of the matter is that it is that way. So, the, the point that I was making here is when I see these people in ministry living like kings, and if you don't believe they are, you haven't been around. I mean, I'm talking about in a lot of places that I've seen here in the United States, in Africa, it's becoming more and more prevalent. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we go there and these are people who are living in poverty and the people who are serving them are living like kings. It's not new. Isn't this what God spoke in Ezekiel when he talked and said, woe to the shepherds of Israel because they were living off the, the sheep rather than feeding and tending the sheep. Right. So because it's, it is a trait of fallen human nature. It is something that we have to get over. It's something that we have to control in our lives. So, I mean, this is, this is what Jesus is saying. He is telling us we have, we have to come to serve. And being a servant, servants don't get exalted. No. <clears throat> they don't even get noticed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, most of the time they don't even get noticed. Mm -hmm. I, I think we, we talked about this sometime in the last couple of weeks. You were talking about, you know, people, we were talking about somebody recognizing somebody else. And I said, well, you know, oftentimes very wealthy people, then when, then we, I don't know what we're talking about. When we were talking about doing the study a few weeks ago about David and Goliath. Oh, right. yeah. And, and Saul, and Saul David. didn't recognize <clears throat> David, even though David had been in his presence many, many times, right. but as a servant. servant. Right. So it's like Saul could see him and not see him at all. Exactly. Right? Because we are not supposed to draw attention to ourselves. Our, our ministry... And this is the ministry of every Christian, is to bring the knowledge of the presence of Christ Jesus, to exalt Christ Jesus. That's why it's so dangerous to be in that position. Well, I'll probably mention this again before we're through, I promise you. But John the Baptist, I pray that you understand mm -hmm. what he meant when he said, speaking of Christ, he said, he, he must increase, increase, but I must decrease. Right. And it's like that seesaw, that teeter-totter. Mm -hmm. You know, one side goes up, the other goes down. They can't both go up, and they won't both go down. So if, if you're on that teeter-totter with Jesus Christ, and you're going up, trust me, Jesus is going down. That's right. I, I can't understand. I mean, that is so clear in Scripture. That's why it troubles me so much to see such a focus on people in ministry rather than the one that they represent. Mm -hmm. But that's true at every level, okay? Yeah. It's human nature. So, and Alice said it best, when you're a servant, who notices you, mm -hmm. you know? We, we, by the way, we should take notice of the people at service. But my, uh, my sister used to be a historian to a the Flagler Museum down in South Florida. And they built the house with service, with, ser with servants, Hallways, so they never, so they never get in contact. They <laughs> also lived on the third floor, had special stairs that they would just appear, mm -hmm. do whatever they had to do, and leave. You you would see them as you know as at as few times as possible. Mark, we lived in a place like that. Yeah. <laughs> we 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 no, lived in an old mansion 
And they had those things, right? They absolutely. Backwards areas yeah. and, you know, yeah. absolutely. Pantries, kitchen areas. And if, if, I don't know what it's like now, but if you in Newport, Rhode <clears throat> Island, which was yeah. kind of a, a summer getaway Bandit for Bronx. the billionaires of, mm-hmm. of the time, that was exactly. I mean, I went there and Alice, we went there one time and went through some of these places and I found it absolutely disgusting because in, in effect, the people that work for them as servants, they consider it, it obviously as less than human, yes, for goodness yeah, gracious. The conditions that they have okay. to live. Okay. Okay. But I, I mentioned Being John a servant the, of the Lord is total. I mean, that's wonderful. It's, it's not anything like that. Is there anything higher? Nothing higher. There is nothing higher than serving the Lord that's Jesus right. Christ. That's and he right. will take care of you. Absolutely. He does. He does not fleece his flock. So, but let me get back on track here because I was talking about John the Baptist Mm -hmm. and think about the Lord sent the angel Gabriel to Zacharias when he was ministering in the temple, right? Mm -hmm. To announce the birth of John the Baptist. And he told Zacharias that John, and he told him the name of John, Mm -hmm. would be great in the sight of the Lord. Mm -hmm. John the Baptist. Jesus said in the Gospel of Matthew, who had a greater ministry of John That's than right. John? He had a great ministry, right? But he was certainly not so great in the eyes of many men. No. He lived in the wilderness, eating locusts and wild honey, wearing camel hair clothing, mm-hmm. right? He, and he paid dearly in his ministry for he paid what did he, he call his life. It cost his, his earthly said. life, yeah. mm-hmm. all right, mm-hmm. for being faithful. So now don't don't misunderstand this. We what could be greater than to be what we are? And what we are is not the high and mighty. What we in the natural, what we are is the children of God. Amen. So we are. The spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are sure. the children of God. That's what it says in Romans 8. So we are princes and princesses. Mm-hmm. We are heirs. Who choose to live as bond servants. As unto the Lord. That's our choice. Okay? So so bear that in mind. It's not about, ministry is not about being served. It's not be, about becoming a high and mighty muckety-muck. It's not about becoming the exalted one. Mm-hmm. And that's happening in all too many ministries. Mm-hmm. If it's happening in, in your life, deal with it. Get out there and do the, the you know, the, the other things. Get, exalt Jesus Christ. How do you... How do you exalt Jesus Christ? How do you live that? By humbling yourself. One of the things I want us to understand, and we talked about this a lot last week, is all have a ministry. Every believer has a ministry. This is not the realm of the spiritual elite, the spiritual superstars, okay? In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, I want to read verses 4 to 6 to start with. Paul writes, Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit. There are varieties of ministries in the same Lord. There are varieties of effects, but the same God who works all things in all. When God gives you a ministry, and he will, he does, it'll be the work of the spirit. It'll be the work of the Lord Jesus Christ, and it'll be the work of God the Father. It's not about you. And he works in all. Let me read, continue on in that chapter. 1 Corinthians 12, but I'm going to start at verse 14. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot says, because I am not a hand, I'm not part of the body, it is not for this reason any less a part of the body. And if the ear says, because I'm not an eye, I'm not part of the body, it is not for this reason any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But now God has placed the members, each one of them, in the body, just as he desired. If they were all one member, where would the body be? But now there are many members, but one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Or again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Whatever your ministry is. It's important. It's important. You know, let me just bounce back a couple of weeks ago again. We were talking about how David was used of God in the Valley of Allah. Mm-hmm. Remember, the, the people of God, the army of God, were shaking in their boots up in the, on the hillside, mm-hmm. refusing to go into battle with the Philistines. 
when David walked out in faith and struck Goliath, well, that motivated everybody in the army to attack and defeat the Philistines. And I said, you know, it's kind of like in the military when you learn how to march, mm -hmm. you always start off on the left foot. So maybe you're only a foot. By the way, there's only one head, and it ain't you. That's right. That's right. It's Jesus. And it better be his heart that's operating that body, not yours. So that left foot takes one step to start the entire body in motion. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think we are so conditioned to say, well, that person, wow, well, look at him. He's a star. If he is a star, that star is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We can't take credit for any of this. We can't do anything without him. The body can't function without him. No, so regardless of what part of the body you are, you are important to the operation of the whole body for it to be effective and working as God designed it. And we are, as it says in Psalm 139, fearfully and wonderfully made, right? The next thing that I just point that I want to make is that all ministry is full time. No, 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 no. I'm going to. This is really, really, really important. It says, work unto your Lord as you would unto God. Not unto your boss. Right. Or you work unto your boss as you would unto the Lord. Well, then, then you're ministering. Yes. Okay. Most Christians have a button somewhere where they turn it on and off. Even even people, you know, in ministry, you know, you go it's out. It's a and Sunday thing. It's a Sunday kind of deal, right? Mm -hmm. The simple fact of the matter is that if every, think about this, every Christian has a ministry and every ministry is full time. I worked at a place when I, when I, I started a church up in New York about 39 years ago. Uh, it's it's still going at the moment. Hallelujah. I went out and took a job. Okay. I worked. I was a national sales manager for a communications company in New York. Mm -hmm. Which, trust me, is very consuming during that time. And people would say to me, oh, are you in full-time ministry? You ever hear that question? Are yes. You, yeah. yeah. Well, you would have. I mean, you know, are you in full-time ministry? That's kind of like Satan saying, oh, did God really say? Because that's a question intended to trip you up. Like if you go out and work in the world. You're not ministering. You're not ministering. You have to set ministry aside in order to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay? I want to tell you that in all of the years that I've been ministering, that was one of the most exciting times of ministry that I ever had. In the workplace. In the workplace. Mm -hmm. And oh, what an effect and what an impact that had. Mm -hmm. I mean, so many people came to the Lord through that job that I had. Mm -hmm. Now, does that mean I didn't do the job well? Does that mean that I was no. going and No. What it means was that I was operating everything in the fruit of the Holy Spirit. I mean, we were the most ethical company. And that sounds like, you know, an oxymoron in this day and age, yes. an ethical company. And people would ask us why. I mean, people would say, you know, why do you do that? Why? Do you? And it got to the place where, I mean... Well, I, I can just tell you, it was like going to ministry every day. We had employees getting saved. We had customers getting saved. I had employees working for me. You know, they, they worked nine to five. Come five o'clock, I'd have to change, chase them out of the offices because all they wanted to do was sit around and share about what God had done in their lives that day. Mm -hmm. You don't turn it off. You can't turn it off if you understand it and you're operating right. Yeah, and you wouldn't want to turn it off. <laughs> well, but don't think, you know, it says Jesus said count the cost. We had a friend just back in those days. There's a cost to it today, more so. I won't yeah. tell you his last name. His first name was Richie. Richie yes, Benjamin. yes. And he, he worked for NBC I, I, he was a in, in New York City. He was a courier for NBC in New York City. Mm -hmm. And he has an, uh, had an amazing testimony when he got saved because he got saved. It changed his life. 
his children got saved and his wife got saved, his mother got saved. One of the things that happened, though, was that immediately he ran into a problem at work mm -hmm. because the other people who were doing that same job, I shouldn't have mentioned the company. Mm -hmm. they, him, they, him. Well, to a certain extent, he was worldly. Were cheating on their expense accounts because they had, you know, as they traveled, they got reimbursed for all of their expenses. When he got saved. When he got saved, all of a sudden his expense accounts changed. They weren't quite as high as they used to be. They were definitely not as high as they used to be. And he was, you know, what happened was his co-employees, co-workers, confronted him and said, you know, you're, you're making us look bad. This is going to show that there's something wrong. He said, well, I'm, he, you know, he stood up and, and said. He said, I can't cheat him. No, so, you know, the funny thing is, I don't know, because I can't recall, this is going back quite a number of mm -hmm. years, uh, how he came to leave there, but he left to go into the ministry full time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I want to tell you, when he was there at NBC, he, he had a ministry. Yes, he was ministry. Mark said, you know, what, whatsoever you do, do is unto the Lord. Okay? Whatever you put your hand to. Yeah. So, if you're doing your work as unto the Lord, if you go into your business and you're doing and you don't have to stand there and hand out flyers. Yeah. You don't have to get up on your desk and start shouting the gospel. But if you are operating faithful to the Lord, doing everything that you do as unto the Lord, the fruit of the Holy Spirit will be evident in your life. And you want to know something? That's what people in the world are desperate for. They are desperate for love. They are desperate for joy. They are desperate for peace. They have absolutely no patience. Mm -hmm. I mean, they don't, they lack, I'm not going to go through the whole list, but you know the fruit of the Holy Spirit. When people see the fruit of the Holy Spirit in you, you're not going to have to knock on their heads. They're going to be coming knocking on your door, wondering why you're different. Yeah. Um, if you're not in full-time ministry, then you're a part-time Christian. Mm -hmm. That's right. Somebody sent me a, a video today. I don't know if you had seen this. Yeah, yeah. And it was a picture of a guy, apparently. I mean, they just showed he was in a mall in Texas. And apparently he and somebody who was with him shared the gospel with somebody. And the security guard in the mall came over and said, you have to stop doing that. Mm. And he said, I'm not going to, he's not going to stop doing that. I'm just, all I'm doing is having a conversation with people. So they, the whole video was about this guard who says he's a good Christian now mm -hmm. is saying you can't do that. You have to get out of here. We're gonna have. We're gonna have to call the police. He's going on and on and on. And he says, well. And at one point he says, well, you know, you're just a radical. He says, I'm a good Christian, but I'm not a radical Christian. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. You better be a radical Christian. You better be a radical Christian. Your life should be consumed by the Lord God Almighty, by the love of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. by the Holy Spirit that indwells you. You know the term compartmentalization? Yes, I do. That's an abomination. Well, you you only have, I mean, you are to love the Lord with your whole being, okay? All of your heart. Well, then, then what's left? Well, nothing. The problem is, I mean, our, people don't trust in the Lord. So they're afraid they're going to get fired. I, I, I don't want to turn this into testimony time here. But as I say, when I worked at that place that I mentioned, we did business right. And because of that, God blessed that business. It was absolutely mm -hmm. insane. When I went to work there as the, the internet or the international sales manager, it was national sales manager, I became international sales manager. Um, their business increased by 300% in the first year. But at one point, and I only had one book in my office. I did all of the sales training in the entire company. I only had one book in my office, and you might want to guess what that is? Yeah. The Bible. And I did all of the sales training out of the book of Proverbs in some other verses. Mm -hmm. Well, at one point, I got called over. I had my own offices, which were about 60 miles away from the corporate main offices. And... I got called over to the home office and I was confronted. I was brought in. I, I reported only to the president. So I went in, I was called into the president's office and the vice president was there and the controller. And they, and they said to me, 
We really appreciate the great job you're doing. But we don't want you to talk about Jesus anymore in the office. They didn't, they were not, trust me, they were not saved. No. Mm -hmm. So I said to them, well, listen, it's your office, it's your business. If you don't want me to talk about Jesus, you have the right to say that. I said, but I have the right to leave. I said, I would rather go pump gas in a gas station for minimum wage and be able to talk about Jesus than to earn the money that I'm earning here and not be able to talk about Jesus. So I resigned. Well, they went into a panic. And before I left, they offered me a little piece of the company to stay, <laughs> which I didn't take. Because when you do it right, there's going to be a cost. But you know what? God is there. Are you willing to pay the price to follow Jesus? I've said this to you a number of times. If you are working for the Lord, regardless of where you are or what task you're doing, mm -hmm. you can't get fired. That's right. You can only get transferred mm -hmm. because you're still going to be working for the same one. Right? You may have to move from the place you're working and go to the another place. doesn't change. But the, the boss president doesn't... of the company is middle management. <laughs> so, but we have to get to that place. Radical, by the way, comes, it's from the root, right? That's what, like a radish is from, it's a root. We need to get back to the root of our faith. And the root of our faith is, ex is shown in Jesus Christ and his teaching. Go read the Sermon on the Mount. You will not find a radical, a more radical teaching than that anywhere. And you know what? That was about how you live your life seven days a week That's out right. in the world. Mm -hmm. It wasn't about a Sunday thing or a Saturday thing or, you know, a Shabbat. It was how you live your life every single day. We are called to be radical Christians. We are called to be full-time Christians. God, you're fearfully and wonderfully made. God did not give you a switch to turn him off. Mm -hmm. Trust me, right? So, God is calling you to a ministry. I promise you that he equips you for the ministry that he calls you to. He, we talked about this. The Pharaoh of Egypt was a harsh taskmaster. He called the Hebrews to make bricks, but we can give them the, the straw that they needed. They had to go get it themselves, right? God will equip you for the ministry he calls you to. He said, I know the plans that I have for you, right? God has a plan for you. That He said that to Jeremiah, right? Jeremiah 29, 11. But this the same Jeremiah that he said when he first starts in Jeremiah chapter 1. He said, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Jeremiah 1, 5. Let me tell you something. God has ordained you to the ministry that he is calling you to or has called you to from before the time you were even born. He is the potter, we are the clay. He was molding you into what he wanted you to be to serve him. And here we are, and we've gone through the entire study. <laughs> Hallelujah. Pray, seek God about your ministry. Seek God about how you can serve him or if you are serving him. Just say, Lord, more. I want to serve you more. I want to do it more and more, and I want to do it right. Mm -hmm. Teach me, Lord God, how to serve you. Well, if you come back next week, we're actually going to get into more of this because it is truly, truly important. So, Father, we just thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you can use us. We thank you, Lord, that you choose to use us for the glory of your name. God bless you, and goodbye until next week. Mm -hmm.